Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bennett back with one more set of notes on waves. We've been doing waves for a few weeks now. We've looked at mechanical waves, sound waves, uh, and then we moved into electromagnetic waves like light. Um, and, we're, and what we're going to be talking about today is how waves interact with things. So waves are not kind of these static things that just happen. They interact with our environment. And it's important to remember at this point that waves carry energy, okay, without transferring matter. So if we're talking about a mechanical wave, there's energy in an ocean wave as the water rises up and falls back down. But that matter, it stays roughly in the same position. Same thing with a sound wave. It's longitudinal. There are vibrations in the air kind of in this back and forth direction, but the air itself is just oscillating. It resonates back and forth. Uh, electromagnetic waves, those are vibrations of the EM field, the electromagnetic field. So it's not actually being carried by matter, but we're still transferring energy. I can, I can see light energy when it hits my eyes. I can feel UV energy when I get a sunburn. Um, so each of these interactions can be um, kind of qualified and classified with each other. Uh, so this, we're gonna look at EM waves first. So I've got a laser set up here and I've got two different densities. So this would be something like air and maybe a prism like glass or water. So I'm going from a low density medium to a high density medium. And when my light is traveling, goes in that direction, and when it hits the surface right here, one of two things can happen. It can continue through and notice my angle, all right? So if that is an angle and that is an angle, it has changed. My angle here is a little bit smaller than it was when I started. The light has bent back toward what we call the normal. And normal is the ideal pathway through an object, through a density, through a high density substance or even a low density substance. Um, it's the path at which the light doesn't bend at all. So if I stood my laser straight up, it would go straight down, but it's not straight up, it's at an angle. And my light is actually bending back toward the normal. So if I go from a high density, or I'm sorry, if I go from a low density to a high density substance, I'm gonna go toward the normal. If it were flip-flopped, if my light were in the water or the glass trying to shine out, it would actually bend away from the normal. Going from high to low density, I bend away. Um, this is called positive refraction. It's, it does what we expect it to do. All naturally occurring materials have positive refraction. Negative refraction would look like this here on the left. So it would bend away we're not expecting it to. This is theoretical at this point. We're actually going to do an article on this, and I'll link them in the descriptions. But um, this would be stuff like invisibility cloaking, right? That, that idea of perfect camouflage, bending light no matter uh, where it wants to go. We can do what we want with it. This is positive refraction. It's doing what we expect it to do in normal circumstances. This is just a, a, an illustration. It's not actually a photograph, but this would demonstrate positive refraction here on the left or on the right and negative refraction on the left, doing something unexpected in its direction change. So refraction is when light bends based on going from high density to a low density. So refraction is here. We've also got this lighter line coming up and going that direction. So when light comes in and bounces back, that's reflection. So when you look in a mirror, that's what the light is doing. It hits the mirror and bounces back to your eyes. Notice with this one, let's say I've got an angle here, so use a double line. We're comparing it to the plane of the substance, whatever your high density substance is. These angles are congruent. So if I come in at a 30 degree angle, let's say, I'm also going to be leaving at a 30 degree angle. So it's equal angles in opposite direction. So refraction is when we continue through the substance and my angle changes a little bit. And reflection is when I bounce back off at the same angle in the opposite direction. We've also got uh, wave interference. And there's two types. There's constructive interference and destructive interference. And we saw this when we did standing waves. Constructive interference is when two crests, so I've got a top of wave here, top of wave there, they meet each other. And if you have two uh, waves traveling in the same direction, so they're both going up at the same time, they amplify each other. So notice if my amplitude, right, we measure amplitude from the rest position to the top, my amplitude has roughly doubled. Now there are ways to predict how much. You don't need to worry about that. But constructive interference is when my wave gets bigger when they meet up. And then they travel on their merry ways and they're back to their normal size. Constructive interference gets louder. 
or it gets larger, higher amplitude. Destructive interference is the opposite. So here I've got the crest of a wave and I've got the trough of a wave. And when they meet, they cancel each other out. Uh, high meets low and you meet in the middle and you go back to rest. Now remember, the matter is not transferred. The energy is you know, just passing by. And so the waves continue on their merry way once they pass each other. And we saw this when we did standing waves. So constructive interference would be like the anti-nodes and destructive interference would be like the nodes. Those waves are traveling opposite directions in the same frequency and the same amplitude. And so we get that pattern of high and low, right? So we have nodes on node, 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 anti-node, anti-node. So the anti-nodes, that's your constructive interference. The node is your destructive interference. And there's also one we're going to look at called diffraction. We're going to do that in class. It's a little bit weird to think through, so I'm just going to explain it in person. You can, there's a lot of other YouTube videos on diffraction, so you can take a look at those later if you want to. Um, anyways, if you have questions, you can leave a comment below. Hit the website for all the handouts and stuff if you want to copy this paper if you're not actually in class with me. If you're in class, I'll see you there. Talk to you then.